Hey everyone, it is Michelle Alexandria coming at you with another review. Sorry if my energy level is a little low, but I'm not sure if I even should be making this particular video because I don't really have much to say about this brand new Samsung Q6F TV that I just bought. As many of you know, I was in a car accident a few weeks ago when I moved in Orlando and and I don't have, and I need a new TV. I need a TV um, to last me for about six months. And originally, and I didn't really want to spend a lot of money on another small fortune on another OLED TV. So I'm giving LCD TVs another chance to wow me. And so far, I'm not wowed. Um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but I'm whelmed, but I'm not overwhelmed and I'm not underwhelmed by these TVs I've been trying out. Because what I want to do is I want to I want to find a TV for around a thousand dollars that I could live with for about six or seven months. But so far, everything I've tried have been just okay. But the problem is when you turn on um, 4K HDR, all of a sudden the TVs go running right running away screaming. So basically I tried, I tried the much, much vaunted, um, the much vaunted, um, what do you call it? The Roku TCL TV. I did a video on that one. I really liked that TV. The 1080p content was really great, but I hated the Roku interface. And honestly, the main problem with that TV is whenever I turn on the 4k HD, watch, watch something with 4k HDR, the, the picture just went screaming in the other direction. It was just a terrible picture. The picture quality was just really horrible. The, it was washed out. It was bland. It, it didn't pop anymore. It was really disappointing. Same thing happened with the Vizio that I bought uh, like two weeks ago. I bought a Vizio um, for about $700. It was a 55-inch EO-1. And I really liked that picture. TV as well. The, the the image quality was great. There was no light bleeding, no flash lighting. The full array local dimming really worked well. Um, and the picture was flawless until once again I went to play 4K content. Once I tried to play 4K content, I couldn't keep that TV because everything just looked really dark, really washed out. And I, so I returned that, and now I have Samsung's. Q6F, their Best Buy Special Edition QLED TV. It's a really nice t uh, entry level QLED TV. It's 55 inches. It has the breakout box with four full HDMI ports, which is really nice. I really love the entire concept of the breakout box. It's great being able to put the box down um, underneath the TV and being able to plug my stuff in without having to go behind the TV. That's pretty awesome. I love that. Um, the stand, the foot, the feet, the foot, the feet are really on the TV are really nice, but way too low. It's re ridiculously low. I, you can't slide a sound bar. I can't. I can barely fit my Apple TV underneath um, this TV. That's really irritating. I wish the feet were a little bit higher so I could put slide a. Uh, a Blu-ray player or something underneath it, but I can't. Um, so that's kind of irritating. Um, from, that's so that's a really big design flaw f in my eyes. Um, I like the fact that the back is really clean. The Samsung calls this their 360 degree back, and no, I'm not going to really show you. And actually, maybe I will do a little B-roll and show you um, all that stuff <laughs> as as I talk about it. But it's just really interesting the way this TV is set up. I like the fact that it actually has enclosed backs. So you can actually do a little bit of cable management if you want. The TV has a 120 megahertz refresh rate, but it's only a it's basically 60 megahertz, it's basically 60 megahertz refresh. It has a built-in Ethernet jack, so I actually have my cable running directly into into the TV. I love Samsung's uh, Tencent interface. It's great. It's, it's actually almost like exactly like um, LG's WebOS. And this is really nice, really smooth. You have access to uh, every app that you, all your main, all your main apps, including uh, 
And this pisses me off. I paid a thousand dollars for a TV. Why the hell do I have to sit here and look at some stupid swing advertising? I want this crap off my TV. It's ridiculous that you know I have to look at a sponsored ad. I mean, come on. And I can't and I can't remove that. That's crap. That that's BS. At least with the LG, their ads are hidden and it's not like in your face. And so and the one thing I really like about I really like the one remote. It is easy to use. It's lightweight. It's um, it fits it fits really nicely in my hand. It is really nice. It feels really solid. It's great. I I love this remote. Um, the picture quality on this is really great. And again, remember I'm coming from an OLED, and I love my OLED. I make no bones about the fact that I like my OLED. I'm allowed to like what I like. I don't give a crap what you all like. I'm the one buying this stuff. I'm the one who has to watch it. So screw you if you don't like, if, if you're all butthurt over the fact that I actually like something that you don't. Grow up. That's life. <laughs> so anyway, um, but I really love it. The YouTube app actually supports full HDR. So so this is for, this is YouTube HDR. Um, and you can tell by if you scroll back up. Uh, boy, go. let's go home. And go to the, so right here you have 4K. And the picture quality is really nice. So here, let's take a look at this Venice in Italy. And of course, a stupid ass shows up. So screw you, YouTube. But look at, look at that picture, look how beautiful that is. I really love, I really love Samsung's uh, p uh, color engine because the colors are really bright and punchy and vibrant. And look at that, that is a really beautiful color. Um, it's sharp, it's clear. Unlike, unlike when I had the, when I had the, um, the last two TVs, the Roku and the, um, and the Vizio TVs, those TVs did, just didn't look good, good at all in 4K and HDR. This TV actually does pop and shine. When it's in full screen mode like this, edgeless TVs are great, actually. They, they are perfectly fine. And you don't, you don't see any light bleeding. The picture is flawless. The problem is every movie you rent, you buy or rent is going to be in letterbox and i wish they would get rid of letterboxing once and for all because we all have big letterboxing made sense when tvs were four three and like 13 25 inches or something that's when it made sense when letterboxing first came on but now 20 or 30 years later it is effing ridiculous we still have to put up with letterboxing when most tvs are going to be 55 inches and bigger especially when you're talking about 4k uh, I'm going to be 55 inches and bigger and already widescreen. So why can't we not get full screen that films? I mean, it's driving, it drives me batty that you can't do that. Um, so anyway, this TV, and this TV also has uh, four, four HD, HDMI 2.2 inputs. It also has uh, like two or three USB, um, USB inputs. Um, so, and it also has a coax cable, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, I don't really have much to say about this TV, but if you scroll and then, and then the, but the problem with the TV is the flash lighting is out of control. So basically I was really enjoying myself watching this TV, but then I went up here to try to watch Harry Potter and Harry Potter, the first 20, I had to stop it after about 20 or 30 minutes because the flash lighting was just unacceptable. It, it was just cutting on and off every, literally every three seconds um, during dark scenes, and it was just ridiculous. I mean, the flash lighting, and if you don't know, flash lighting is basically when the light turns on behind the picture, um, so you can actually see the light coming in from behind the picture. So so basically what happened was I was trying to watch it. I was trying to watch this movie, and it just kept, it just kept, the flash lighting just kept coming on and cutting on and off. I mean, it kept coming, on and off around around the edges. But the weird thing is, if you look, you don't actually see any uh, any blooming or in artifacting around the black bar around the black bars. So I was really impressed with that and really excited to watch this movie. 
because it's kind of like one of my test movies to test how good a TV actually is because, you know, Harry Potter is a really dark movie, has a lot of shadows and all that kind of fun stuff. So I was really hoping it would do well. And you can actually see some of the flash lighting around here in the, in the, left, in the left corner. So in the left corner over here, you can probably see a little bit of it, but not as much as if that scene was actually dark. Um, but it was crazy. It was a crazy amount. Um, so let me see if I can find it from in the beginning when it was really bad. So it was really bad over here, like in and the, the and the other thing. So you you can actually see it. You can see you can see the flash lighting turn on. And and the worst the worst part about this TV is it doesn't support Dolby Vision and oh and you can also see it down here in the bottom. So if you look right around here, you can you can see it. You can see it there, you can see it up there. Um so yeah, you, and you can literally see it turning on and off. So it's really irritating and it's not good at all. And the other thing that drives me nuts is the fact that it doesn't support Dolby Vision. And the only reason why it doesn't support Dolby Vision it's because Samsung have been assholes, really. Um, they really are, and, they, and they're not going to support Dolby Vision. And I don't want to deal with a company that, you know, is just playing games. So I, don't, so I think for those reasons, I'm going to end up returning this TV. And, and I know Best Buy is probably on the verge of banning me. So I'm just going to end up getting the C7 again and calling it a day. I mean, I'm going to play with this TV for another week, or I may get this C7 tomorrow. I haven't decided yet. But, yeah, this is just really driving me nuts because I had to run to Best Buy tonight just to uh, swap out this stupid uh, 4K player. Um, and I should probably just do it both tomorrow, but I have nothing else to do. So why not just go down there and see what, what's the haps at Best Buy and try to get that done. But... Yeah, so this this is actually showing in 4K. Says it's uh, playing 4K Dolby Vision, but this isn't a Dolby Vision TV, so I'm not sure how Apple can be can claim this is this is actually streaming in 4K Dolby Vision when the TV doesn't support Dolby Vision. So stuff like this is kind of driving me a little nuts. Um, but yeah, for a thousand dollars, it's not a bad buy, but. But if you look at look at it, look, you can see the flashlighting going on with, with this TV. It's kind of it's terrible, and I don't know what to do. So yeah, I'm going to end up returning this and just getting the C7. But it's it's going to make me salty buying the same TV I already owned again. Um, and and it's not even particularly cheap. I mean, it's seventeen hundred bucks still, which is effing ridiculous. It should be at least thirteen like 1300 or something. But anyway, I'm going to run out to Best Buy tomorrow and get that. And then tonight, I will probably end up getting... Um, well, it depends. If Best Buy um, just gives me a remote, then I'm fine with that. Otherwise, I will go out and buy an Xbox One X. So anyway, that's it. Talk to you later. And again, this is not meant to be a review. It's just me chatting chatting about my tv that's all it is so anyway talk to you guys later bye